And I believe God laid this on my mind, so I'm going to share this with you. Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I want to ask you a quick question. Have you ever been in a situation where you knew somebody and you were with a group of people? You came with them, you're hanging with them, but this other person who wasn't part of your plan for the day shows up out of nowhere and they're saying, hey, how you doing? Or however they talk. And the way they carry themselves and the way they're speaking and all of that, you're kind of embarrassed to acknowledge that you even know this person. And you know them well, you hang with them all the time. But you're here with a couple of a couple of uppity ups or with a group of people that are very influential. And you're trying to put your best foot forward and make this phenomenal impression on them. And then Dingbat shows up. You're running, buddy. And you're like, oh, no, not now. Don't you kind of want to run and hide? Don't you feel a little embarrassed? Maybe they don't have a command on the English language and everybody you're dealing with in your group that you're with that night, and they're, they're, they're loaded with PhDs and credentials and skills. and I'm, Yeah. That happens in life. Right or wrong, it happens. However, here's the sad part. Some of us treat Jesus Christ the same way. <laughs> Show up on Sunday, oh yeah, you know, we're on one accord, that's cool. But don't pop up on my job. Don't embarrass me like that. You know how these people feel about Christianity? Don't put me on front street like that. Be cool. I'll call you when I need you. All right. This is what Romans chapter 10, <laughs> verse 9 says. But if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. <laughs> For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Now, I know a lot of people, you know, they show that for people who want to get saved. And hopefully, some of you who want to commit your life to Christ will grab that and absorb it into your system. But this is my challenge to those of you who have already done so. Okay. God will never be anybody's part-time lover. He's not going to be your um, affair, your love affair. And you know how we keep our love affairs quiet. We don't want people to know about the love affair. Yeah, and my business. And that they been that my business. Keep that between you and me. And not the way God works. You own up to him. You acknowledge him. You affirm him. You bring all, you fess up. You bring all that out in the open. Because see, there's a scripture that says, if you confess me before you, before this wicked generation, I'm putting it in loose terms right now. You confess me before men, I confess you before God. But if you don't, I don't. You know, this thing goes both ways. Yeah. We either marry, uh, bond is solidified for life, for the world to see, well, we don't have a bond. Now you decide which way you're going to take that. If embarrassment comes with the package, you take your lumps. You got married to the person you're married to. You married them in spite of the fact that you know they got some problems and you're not ashamed of them. How dare you be ashamed of me? Mm, okay. Now, I say that to say, I always say that, but anyway, 
this is what you have to think about. What Jesus did for you and me on that cross and all that led up to it, he did it openly, he did it publicly. He took on the shame, the humiliation, and the punishment that he did not even deserve. How dare you be ashamed? How dare you not want to rock the boat? How dare you be afraid to utter the name of Jesus in public? Please. Trust me when I say, when God says, I am a jealous God, he's not playing. He will have no other lovers before him. He's not number one. He's it. He is the one. And if you can't place him in that level of your existence, you don't have him. When it comes to judgment day and he looks at you and you tell him, oh, I did this in your name and that in your name and that, but you didn't confess me before men, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You didn't know me, I didn't know you. You didn't know up to knowing me. You were ashamed of me. What makes you think I'm proud of you? I'm putting it all in human terms so you can really get the gist of what he's saying here. You know, I'm not going to date somebody and they're going to keep me undercover like they're ashamed of me. Oh, no, 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 no. And I deserve punishment because I'm sinful just like you because we were born and shaping in iniquity. Nobody has to teach you how to tell a lie. It comes natural. <laughs> yeah. Nobody has to tell you to steal or take something that doesn't belong to you or sneak around and do something you were told not to do. Nobody has to teach you to disobey. This is how you disobey. First you do this for no. All of that comes natural. I'm being country right now. But you get the point. You have to own up to who you know. He owned up to you when he died for you. He owned up to me when he died for me. How dare you or I sit there and act like we don't know him. We get out in public and somebody is over there Bible thumping. They're proclaiming the name of Jesus. They're out on the street witnessing. And they may know you. Hey, sister so-and-so, and you want to do this. Because the people you work with don't know that you're a born-again Christian because you are living your life as an undercover agent. Don't think you'll get anything from God. Because the day you denied him in your life. <laughs> I'm not going to take it any further because God is merciful. And he understands in a lot of cases. But trust me, when it comes to the end, you better get that together. Because he ain't going to hang around. He's not going to be tailing behind you in the, in the shadows, in the back, in the corner, in the dark. Only coming out when you, <sharp inhale> come here, I need you now. Mm -mm, no, he's not playing that. He's not your patsy, he's not your bellhop, and he's not your other lover. Think about that. There's a scripture that says, my heart, I shall not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Hopefully you won't either. God bless you.